<laughs> Hello everyone, hope that you're well. Well, I guess if you're here, you're new to Streetcar and you're after a few hints and tips on how to progress on the game. Hopefully I can help you out with that. My name's Craig. In the game, everyone knows me as Tough Monkey. If you haven't already, head on over to the Facebook page for Streetcart, and uh, on there you will find a huge resource of hints and tips from the uh, best people in the game. It's the only game I've ever known where the top 10, 20, 30 people are all on Facebook and will all help you out whenever you ask any questions. Just go on there, log on, uh, ask whatever you need, one of us will help you out. If you haven't already, also look out for my YouTube website uh, for Tough Monkeys. Uh, I've got plenty of tutorials on there, lots of uh, guides on how to set up your cart and things like that, so head on over to there. Now, I've been playing this game for two years, since the day it came out on the App Store, in fact, and I've done all right out of it. Now, I'm often held up as the example of how you can do well on this game without spending any additional resources on in-app purchases. Uh, it is possible. It's very, very difficult to do it, but it is possible. It relies on careful management of uh, your resources and a strong strategy. I accept that's probably not what you want to hear. You just want to go out and set your fastest time with the best carts and the best upgrades. Uh, but there is a strategy behind this game. It's not Gran Turismo, it's not Forza Horizon, and it's not Mario Kart. Uh, it requires a strategy to be the best. Now, if you find yourself running low on resources, and that's highly possible, you can always buy some additional aces. Now, this is a genuine real money purchase, but other than the uh, developers loving you forever, they do put the money back into the game, so that means more tracks, more cars, and extra upgrades for you and me to play in the future, which is a good thing. Now, although I've never spent any money on uh, any aces in these last couple of years, what I have done is I've invested my own time into doing things like these uh, tutorials and promoting the game and pushing people further into the game. And this is what this video is about. This is a video about getting everyone out of cadets and into TKM. Cadet is not where your future lies. TKM is the next step and you need to be getting there as soon as you possibly can. Cadets is just there as a means to dip your toe in the water, just to get you used to the game. Uh, an hour and a half to maybe two and a half hours, you can graduate through cadets and into TKM. Uh, TKM will give you access to much faster carts, much more upgrades, and you'll be having a lot more fun a lot quicker than you will doing cadets. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting a completely new account. I've pinched my wife's old iPad and I'm going to install Streetcart and we're going to go through it together and see how we get through cadets and into TKM. Okay, first job, give yourself a name. There's a couple of thousand people on this game, so try and make it memorable, but try and keep it clean. And Tough Monkey? Well, that's my old team name from when I used to cart for real. Enable this option if you want the game to let you know of any status changes. Okay, let's start to play the game. Let's have a look around. When you first start playing the game, a lot of the options are locked up. They'll only start to open as you play the game. This is the apparel store. This is where you kit yourself out with new gloves, new boots, new helmet and new suit. When you first start playing the game, we've only got the option of buying a new helmet. At this stage, your choices are very limited. You've got the three standard helmets here, which are 100 SK, or if we go back and go into the alien racewear section, there are a few other colors, which are a little bit more money. At this time, it doesn't really matter. I would save you money and go for a stock standard helmet. Just choose one in a color that's suitable for you. You'll have plenty of time as you develop into the game to kit yourself out with the colours and styles that you want. So for now, just get the cheapest thing possible. All we're wanting to do is get through cadets with spending the least amount of resources. Now, ATT, App Tracking. It's a relatively new thing by Apple and it gives you greater power over your privacy settings. For the game to function at its best, you will need to allow this. This will allow the game to tailor itself to your best needs and to allow you to enter multiplayer events. Right, let's have a look at what races are available to you at this moment. Okay, we've got the Rossberg Academy, which is the first thing you'll be doing, the Cadet Championships, uh, Sponsor Invitationals, Multiplayer Events and Solo Practice. Little welcome message from Nico there. Now, a little tip, whenever you see these text box out, there's a tiny little cross in the top right corner you need to press to get rid of it. It's very easy to miss. Now, solo practice. This is a relatively low cost way of being able to try out new settings on whatever tracks are available at the given time. These aren't all the tracks available in the game, but at the moment we've got Dubai, Gibson, Palmer, Underground and Glasto. 
Now usually in the game you're racing against only AI, but in multiplayer it gives you the opportunity to race against other human beings. Sponsor Invitationals. This is an opportunity to win additional short-term or long-term sponsorship, which supplements your income on individual races. Now the amounts that you win don't seem very large, but over a course of a season it really builds up, and it's a very big part of the strategy in the game. Championship Events. This is your bread and butter. This is where you're going to spend most of your time in the game. Entering individual events that last typically around about 24 hours, and it's where you'll be winning most of your SK and your Aces, and it's these events that count towards the weekly championship. And you can enter these events as many times as you want. You'll get a small amount of prize money for each race that you win, but if you're not winning the races, you've got to take into account that you're going to have to be servicing your cart, which can work out more expensive than the prize winning you'll get. You will get a big prize payout at the end of the event, provided you've placed highly. So my advice to you is if you're confident, do as few runs as possible to get a time that you're comfortable with. Every race in the game has a league table like this. This tells you what the latest standings are, who's doing what, in what cart, and it'll also tell you how many points you're likely to win. Now these league tables are a wonderful source of information. You can work out your own strategy from what you find in there. You can see what other carts people are using, you can see what sort of times people are running, which will give you a good idea of what sort of return you're expecting to get, and decide how much you want to invest into the meeting. There's no point pumping tons and tons of resources into the same meeting if you don't think you're going to get any return for it. Okay, let's push on and enter the Rosberg Academy. In here, we're going to find three events that we're going to need to complete. These are very simple challenges just to get you used to controlling the cart. Here's where you get to choose your control method. There are three available here, plus you can also connect your PS4, PS5 or Xbox joypads. I've done a YouTube video on how to do that if you want to search for that. And which control method you go for is down to personal preference, but little tip, the vast majority of the top guys all use tilt. The first few times that you race you're going to encounter these on-screen helps. This one's just giving us some instruction on the tilt to steer function, but you'll also get pop-ups giving you objectives for this particular section. The game is assuming at this point that you've never played it before, so all the instructions at the moment are going to be a little bit simplistic, but bear with it, it's all good information and we'll soon skip through this. So this is going to be your first actual experience of the cart in the game. Just use the opportunity to get used to the feel of the cart. It'll handle very different to what you might be used to on other games such as Gran Turismo or Horizon. In karting the controls are very direct. When you steer or when you brake it happens immediately. It's very easy to over control a cart. It's very easy to be too harsh on the pedals, very easy to lock the rear axle by braking. It's very easy to zigzag down the straight by oversteering and trying to counter steer. The first few laps out in the cart, it's going to be a learning experience. You will make mistakes, you are going to be zigzagging all over the place, but you'll soon learn how to control the cart. You'll soon learn to realise that being very smooth with a cart is fast. Smooth is fast. Don't zigzag, don't lock the brakes, be smooth on the accelerator. If you hear the wheel sliding, you're scrubbing off speed. If you're locking the brakes, you're not in control of the cart. Just keep your inputs calm and smooth and your times will fall. And while a cart is a very direct, responsive creature, it's also a very slow thing to accelerate. All of the carts in this game are single speed. That means there's just one cog in between the engine and the rear driven wheels. If the cart is geared for speed, that means it's got a big cog, which also means it's going to be harder to accelerate. A smaller cog will give you a more acceleration, but less speed. But in all cases, your goal is to keep the revs as high as possible. The fastest speed you can carry through the corner, the less acceleration you're going to have to make on the other side of the corner. Anyway, that's all technique. That'll come with practice. We've succeeded in what we needed to do here. We should just choose our controls and make sure we're happy with them. So let's move on to the next section. Solo practice. All we're trying to do here is beat an 80 second lap. We should be able to do that on our first lap. If only we had a former Formula 1 world champion to give you some encouragement. Welcome to ProCart Raceland in Wackersdorf, Germany. I'm Nico Rosberg. This is a great track, especially in cadets, with wide open spaces, meaning it's easy to take a good racing line. Carts are lighter than cars, have no suspension, and therefore handle differently. Remember to just tap the brakes, maintaining speed is critical in kart racing. The goal is to set a clean lap, then work on being fast. Let me walk you through the first lap. Press the accelerator when the lights turn green. Don't go too early or you'll receive a penalty. 
yeah, what he said. Right, Nico's given us a target of 1 minute 20 to complete a lap. He's suggesting we should do it on the second lap, which will be your flying lap because you're at full speed as you cross the line, but you can do it in less than a minute and 20 seconds, even from a standing start. Move wide left for the first 180, then full throttle out of the corner. Flat out through the left hander. Lightly tap the brakes for the 180 left. Build momentum and take the next right hander flat out. Easy through fast right. Lift off and slow for the chicane. Now put your foot down hard. Next is a sharp 180 left. Just tap the brakes here. A 180 has been right. Momentum in this corner is critical. Okay, let's go for a flying lap. Yeah, let's not. We've already achieved the objective of this. One thing, if you find yourself struggling with the cart, if you press that spanner looking icon next to the speedo, it'll open up an in-game menu. More options will become available to you as you go into the game, but for now, you can adjust the steering sensitivity. That will help you out if you find that you're weaving down the road a lot. I like to have a sensitive cart, but that really is down to personal preference. Okay, your last job, to earn your license. This is a two lap race of Wackersdorf once again, and your objective, to finish in the top three. Easy. Now this should be a relatively easy task. You're racing against four AI characters here, and all you've got to do is finish ahead of two of them. You're aiming to finish in the top three, that's it. All you've got to do here is keep your head. You shouldn't have any trouble beating the AI on pace. And when you come to overtaking them, you can give them a bit of a love tap. Just ease them out of the way. They do nothing less to you. And as you become more experienced in the game, you'll realise that they've really got a target on your back. Once you're in front of them, you shouldn't have any problems keeping them behind. If you've managed to overtake them, then you should have the speed to keep you in front of them. There is a bit of a quirk of the game I've noticed that if you were to have an accident slide off the track and fall behind them, their pace does seem to increase a lot. You find it a lot harder to overtake them for the second time than you did for the first time. Well, that's just a bit of a quirk. Provided you can keep it on the tarmac, keep it in front of them, you should win this challenge, not a problem. So all we wanted to do is keep it nice and smooth. As I've said before, smooth is fast. Anyway, let's spin this on to the end of the race. And that is job done. That's all three of the Rosberg Academy events sorted and we can move on to doing some proper racing. Smile for the camera, grab your license and let's go racing. Woohoo, now we're cooking. 70 aces and 200 SK. Now I don't know if you noticed, but when the game started you had 20 aces and 300 SK. SK and Aces are the lifeblood of this game. You need to learn how to treasure them. Unless you're going to be spending real money in the game, you're going to have to learn how to spend your Aces and SK wisely. Everything in this game can be achieved without spending any additional money, but you've got to get yourself into the mindset from the very beginning. The temptation is to spend your SK and Aces as soon as you have them. You're going to want the best carts, you're going to want the best upgrades, the fruitiest fuel and the stickiest tyres. And they only come from spending Aces. But you don't need to use your best weapons every race. Pick your fights. Understand risk to reward and use them when you need them. If you're patient and understand your strategy, you'll become a better driver. Buying aces will allow you to progress further into the game quicker, but it won't get you to the top. If you do want to buy some aces though, if you click the plus in the top left corner of the home screen, this is where you'll find them. There should be a package on here for every budget, and if you keep your eyes on Facebook, there's quite often some pretty good offers. Now, if you click on this purple helmet, I am not saying a word, this will take you through to your personal profile. 
This will give you all your stats from the game, including races won. Down in the bottom right corner, those helmets represent the SK trophies. Those are milestones of things you've done in the game. So all I've achieved on this account so far is to graduate two cadets. You can also add your Facebook, Instagram and YouTube accounts on here so people can find you on there. Clicking on the flash icon will take you into the fitness menu. This shows you what your current weight is and what your race fitness is. Your race fitness will go down the more you race and your weight will go up the less that you race. Now, weight is everything in this game. You want to be as light as you possibly can, you and your cart. So the more you race, the better it is for you. And clicking on the white helmet, that takes you into an area where you can search for other users. If you know a player's name or their username, search for it in here. If we search for Tough Monkey, we'll find my main account, Tough Monkey, and my original TKM account, which is Tough Monkey 69. I don't use that one anymore. In there, you can see all of their stats and career achievements. You can see their Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube accounts. And if you want to, you can choose to follow them. Okay, I think it's time we start doing some racing, don't you? Okay, what Duncan is telling you there is that this bar here shows you where you are in relation to promotion and to your other rivals. Currently, we're on zero points. To get promoted to TKM, we need 170 points. That's our aim. Okay, we've got a couple of races that are currently live, Wackersdorf in Dubai. Let's choose mm -hmm. Wackersdorf. Okay, this is the race page. It'll tell you all you need to know about this meet. That's including the number of laps and the weather conditions. Mm -hmm. If you click on leaderboard, this is the leaderboard. It'll tell you all you need to know regarding all your rivals, what sort of time you needed to be looking at, and what kind of return you might expect to get for where you're gonna finish. Now, don't focus on the leaderboard in cadets. You're not gonna be around long enough to be in the leaderboard for very long. All you're wanting to do is get 170 points, which as you can see from this screen, you don't get any points for where you finish overall. You're gonna get points for where you finish in the race itself. If you win, you'll get 15 points. So if you win 12 meets, that's 180 points. You're already qualified and through to TKM. We can do that in well under an hour. If you click on the top 100, that'll take you to the all time best times for this track. Ignore it, no one cares. This is Cadet. You haven't got the cart, you haven't got the kit, you haven't got the talent at the moment. Just ignore it. All we're doing is trying to get promoted to TKM. So click race now and we'll enter our first race. This is the lobby, all the AI are joining, that's the grid, and we're at Wackersdorf for our first ever race. Now I'm not gonna subject you to an hour's worth of racing, that's not what this video is about. So we'll skip through all the races and we'll just cut through to the menus and I'll explain what to do next. Now, when you've been playing this game for a while, you'll just skip these post-race screens. But let's have a look at them because there's some information that's quite useful. Now, what this screen is telling me is that I was awarded 37 SK for winning that race. However, there's a DNF multiplier, the Did Not Finish Multiplier. And that's the result of an Amazon delivery while I was recording the video, but we'll gloss over that. Now, what that means is I only get 79% of my overall winnings. So I only actually take home 30 SK rather than 37 SK. That shows the importance of finishing every race. This screen will also tell you when you get a PB. Well, it's obvious I've got a PB here, it's my first ever race, but it's nice to know that you're going in the right direction. If you also get a world record, you'll get told on the next screen. This race tells you how many points you've won from that race. We came first, we got 15 points. In TKM, you get 10 points for winning a race. In X30, five points. In PRJ, you get nothing at all. But right here, in Cadets, you've just won 15 points, and that's going into the total of 170 that you need before you can get promoted into TKM. That's a good start. Oh, and FYI, this sound will wake your wife up if you're playing street cart late night in bed. Lastly, this is Kudos. It's not really used in the game very much at the moment. It's going through a bit of a redevelop. So in the future, maybe, but at the moment, I won't worry too much about Kudos. So that's confirming that we won the race meet, or the AI with second, third, fourth, and fifth. And on the next screen, that shows where we are in the race meet overall. Currently, we're fourth. And if it finishes like that, I'll get 197 SK. And if you click enable here, you'll get told if anyone beats your time. These arrivals. 
These are people, human or AI, who are ahead of you in the championship at the moment. Eric, for example, is on 24 points. Sometimes you'll be given a challenge to beat him. If you can beat him in an allocated amount of time, you'll get an Aces reward and an offer on tyres or fuel. In this case, you've got 8 minutes and 40 seconds to beat Eric. Right, let's get on and do some more races. Let's have a look at what we've got so far. Looking at my points, I've got 15 points. We need 170, so we're going to need to do a few more races. These are all the events currently available to us. There's four or five available, so let's pick one. We may as well do at least one of each, so let's do the next one, Dubai. Take a quick look at the leaderboard. This is just to get a feel for where we need to be. Remember, we are not interested in winning the event. We're not interested in getting world records. If you do get a fast time, brilliant, well done, but that's not the main goal here. In fact, I've just spotted my name on there. 13th position, Tough Monkey, 21 months ago. That was when I graduated through cadets with this account. I've not been back since. Right, let's get on with it. Now then, oh, hang on. This chap, you might already know. This is Super GT. He's your mechanic. You'll be dealing with him quite a lot during the game, but you might also know him from YouTube. He does a lot of gaming videos, karting, motorsport. He's got over half a million subscribers. He'll appreciate one more. And he's also part of Quadrant, which is more of the same, except also stars this guy. Right, as before, let's whip through the race quickly. We're not interested in this, only what we're doing outside of the races. Let's have a quick look at the after race screens. Another PB, it was the first time we raced it, so obviously. Uh, and you'll also notice my DNF multiplayer has gone, gone up to 0.91, so I'm now getting 91% of all the race winnings I should be getting. But most importantly, that's another 15 points in the bag. We've still got another 140 to go, but we're getting there quickly. And according to that, we're in fifth place overall in the race meet. Not interested in that, but it's nice to know where we are. This guy is Race Consultant. If that's his real name, then it's a very convenient name for his job. This hipster dude, he'll pop up from time to time with decent deals on fuel and tyres. Keep an eye out for him. And this is Erica. She pops up every now and again with offers on aces. Every few hours you've got an opportunity to watch a video, and once you've watched the video, you can collect five aces. It's worthwhile doing it. The adverts usually last anything from five to 30 seconds. You have to watch them all the way through before you can claim the uh, reward, but it's worth doing because it can mount up by a lot of aces. So that's five more races in the kitty. We're up to 75. And in fact, we've just beaten Eric in our rival challenge, so we're gonna get a few more races. That's an extra two more. Every ace counts. Oh, and here's the hipster race consultant dude again. He's got an offer for us. He's offering us some warm, super soft tyres for only one ace. Now, that is a very, very good deal. They're usually around about 15 aces, so it's an introductory offer. Take it while you can get it. Right, next race, let's move on to the next one, the Zip Cadet Cup at Extreme Underground. This is one of the shortest tracks and the shortest events in the entire game. We're only going to be doing three laps of a very short track, and I'll let you into a little secret. This is going to be your friend. You're still going to get the same prize money for winning this race, but you're travelling shorter distance, therefore less servicing costs. Plus, you're also going to whip through this race a lot quicker than doing longer tracks. This message is telling you that your tyres are past the best. When the condition bar goes into yellow, they've no longer got the grip they had when they were new. However, these tyres will give you enough performance to still win races in cadets, even when they get into the red zone. You can also have a look at what other tyres are available to you. Here we've got wets, inters, and there you're super soft. They're only for when you want to set your very fastest times. Having said all that, you're being offered a free set of stock cadet tyres. You may as well take them. Right, as a one-off, I'm going to show you this race. This is underground. You're going to get very familiar with it. You'll be going round and round and round this track so many times during the game. Now, I'm highlighting this because unlike all the other tracks, track limits don't seem to matter. Pretty much every track in the game, if you go off the track, you'll get penalised. That doesn't apply here. I don't know why, but you can ignore all curves. You can ignore all painted lines. As far as you're concerned, track limits are the walls and you can use every inch of this track. And this chicane, this is probably the hardest section of the course. Other than that, you can just switch your brain off and just keep going round and round and round. And that's all I've got to say on Underground, so let's spin it on. A quick look at the after race screens. 
Another PB, obviously, first run again, and we're now up to 99% of race winnings. That's good. And that's another 15 points in the bag. We've only got 125 points left to go. This means that we can now access the leaderboards. From here we can see how we're faring against our rivals and everyone in the game. These guys we're looking at here, these are just my rivals that I've been given so far. If you look on the left of the screen where it says leaders, if you click on that, it'll show you everyone currently in cadets. Now in cadets, the leaderboard, it's pretty worthless. Once you get to 170 points, you're gonna get promoted. There's no championship title like there is in X30 and TKM. There's no rewards for hanging around, so let's get promoted to TKM. If you just click on the crew there, it'll take you through to the new menu that's opened. There's Super GT, your kart mechanic, and Jay, who's your engine mechanic. Now, they're not doing a great deal at the moment, but as the game develops, they'll become far more important to you. So what else has opened up to you? Let's take a look in the apparel store again. Now when we're looking here, it's not just the helmets we've got to choose from, we've got gloves, we've got boots and we've got suits. Again, more brands will become available to you as the game develops, but right now we've got a choice of stock Maverick and stock Mustang boots. The Mavericks are what you're wearing at the start of the game, but you've now got the option to open up the Mustangs. To do that, you need to request a mission. There are lots of different missions in the game, and if you succeed them, you open up that apparel. This time, we've been given a time attack challenge at Glasto. We have to beat two minutes and 33 seconds. However, we don't currently qualify for that entry. We don't meet the criteria to enter this particular race. In this case, it's a new engine in the cart. Our cart currently only has the used engine. But don't worry, you don't have to succeed the challenges. There's no penalty for failure. And besides, we've got an hour to do this one. Plenty of time to get a new engine fitted. And if we go back to the events that we've got available to us, you'll notice that some of them are restricted to new engines only, so we can't enter those anyway. What I think we should do is just smash out a load of runs around the underground, get our points up. So as always, let's quickly whip through this one. Sometimes I really do wish it was as quick as that. So we're up to 60 points now, only 110 points left to go. And apparently we've raised six times and that's given us access to some additional goodies including better fuel. Standard fuel is 90 octane, we've now got 95 octane. Oh, and we've also got access to the new engine. Ah, now this gives us options. And it's also gonna give you some strategy to think about. It's 500 SK for the new engine, which you don't currently have, you've only got 300 and something. So although Ollie's telling you to go and get a new engine, you can't afford it just yet, but we're not far away. So let's get back to underground, do a few more runs, get our SK up and get our points up. Up to 75 points, less than 100 to go, we're flying. Before you know it, someone's going to be offering us a contract. Oh, and here's Erica, what's she got to tell us? Right, we're joining her management team. Now, well, and apparently she's got some money to give us. Well, where do I sign? Oh, right here, that's where I sign. Okay, Erica's given us three options here. You may as well tick all three because we're going to succeed in all three. You're going to get 600 SK for your troubles. And there you go, 600 SK. You've joined the big league. Now we've got some money to spend. Before we spend it, let's smash a couple of extra races out at Underground, get a couple more steps closer to getting promoted, and then we'll decide what to do with our extra money. During the course of a season, you'll get asked to choose a number of challenges. One is always a default one, and that's to get enough points to get promoted. The other two on this case, they're optional. You don't have to choose them if you don't want to. If you were to succeed, for example, beat Nico at the Wackersdorf Cup, you'll get a thousand SK. However, if you were to take it on and then fail it, you would lose that thousand SK and cancel out the thousand you'd get from getting into the promotion zone. So choose wisely. Now I know I should be able to beat Nico, but I also know I'm not gonna be bothered about getting all of my kit to satisfy the third mission. But this is where strategy starts to come into it. I know that I'm not going to be able to beat Nico's time unless I buy the new engine, but that's gonna cost me 500 SK. But if I'm going to get a thousand back for completing the mission, then that 500 for buying the engine is a very, very good investment. It's the risk to reward thing you'll hear me banging on about quite a lot. Okay, a new fuel tank has been unlocked. The standard fuel tank is nine liters. This is now six liters. That means you'll be carrying less fuel, less weight, which means you'll accelerate quicker and handle better. I think it's now time to go and have a look at doing some upgrades.
Oh, and while we're at it, we've just beaten another rival. That's an extra two aces in the bank. Which also means we should be getting an offer from the bloke with the funky beard. And here he is. What's he got for us? Okay, one cool super soft and one warm super soft for 15 aces. That's not a bad buy, actually. It's always worth having a couple of those in stock. Okay, let's upgrade the cart. Go to garage and then click on the cart. Then click on upgrade. This will take you through to your available upgrades. At the moment, we've got fuel tank and engine available to us. Click on fuel tank. There's the standard fuel tank, which is actually seven liters and not nine liters, as I said a moment ago, and the new six liter fuel tank. Now it's gonna cost us 50 SK to upgrade here, and it'll also take two minutes for the item to be delivered. To buy it, click on the shopping trolley upgrade, and it'll take you through to this screen. This gives you the opportunity to speed up the delivery process. If you really must have it right now, you can spend aces and get it delivered quicker. In this case, two aces and the two minute timer will disappear. However, unless you really, really are in a rush, I would always say wait. Save your aces for something far more important. But for the purpose of this video, to show you what happens, I'm gonna speed it up. And there you go, you've already got it. It's already fitted, ready to go. Now let's go back into upgrade and stick the new engine on. Go to engine, and there are your two engines. Your current engine is a used engine. If you go to the next one, that's your brand new engine. On the left hand side, you can see how it compares to your current engine. The green bars show that you're gonna have a faster cart and a quicker accelerating cart. It's also a more durable engine. So let's go ahead and buy that. This time, I'm not gonna spend any aces on rushing it through. I'm gonna show you what happens if you just let it wait. There you go, same result. New engine, fitted, ready to go. Let's go and give it a play. Let's take it for a test drive at Wackersdorf. We already know that our PB is two minutes and 10 seconds using the cart when they had the old engine in. Let's see what we can do when we've got a new engine and a lighter fuel tank. It feels quick at this speed. And there we go, much quicker. Nearly seven seconds quicker than the old engine. Worth the upgrade. And another 15 points closer to promotion. Only 50 points left to go. Now, if you ever post a top 10 time for a particular track, you'll get a message similar to this. That's not important in Gidez. Oh, and here comes Erica with another objective. Uh, this time our boots are starting to wear out, so she's offering us 40 SK if we upgrade them to something newer. At any time, you can go and check out any outstanding missions. Click on the missions uh, icon and you'll find this page. This shows you all your current objectives. So a uh, key mission is obviously to get promoted. We've got 50 more points needed to get to promotion. Uh, we've got a couple of challenges, the Glasto time attack, replacing the warm boots and beating Nico's time. We've already succeeded in doing that. So at some point we're gonna get a thousand SK. Eric is a little behind at the moment. We've already done that. We've got a thousand SK coming towards us at some point in the future. But Erica still wants us to do the manager mission, uh, replacing the boots for some new ones. So let's go and change those now. So go back to the main menu, click on apparel store and choose your boots. If you then click on stock, that's the brand in this case, it'll give you the options of what's available to you. We've got the stock Maverick, which we're currently wearing and the stock Mustang. And we still need to open up the Mustangs, so we've got to uh, complete the objective. This is the uh, Glasto time attack. We'll get 20 SK for doing it, plus the boots will be open to us. And because we fitted the new engine, we've now got access to the event. We couldn't enter it before, but we can now. We've got the new engine fitted. Let's have a crack. Remember, the objective was to beat a 233 time, and we've got a 150. Smashed it. That means we've unlocked the new boots, and we're gonna look proper dapper. And also, we're up to 135 points, just 35 more needed. Oh, and here's Erica to remind us that our boots are in fact wearing out. It's a good job we've just opened some new ones up. So let's collect our 20SK for winning the event and unbox our lovely new trainers. They're gonna cost us 120SK to buy them. We've just won 20, so that's only 100 remaining, but it's a good investment. So let's go to the apparel store and get them purchased. Go to boots, go to stock, go to your Mustangs, and buy your spanking new boots. Oh, and because you completed Erica's mission and got 40 SK for that, these boots are actually only going to cost you 60 SK. That's not a bad deal at all. So if we head back to the main menu and then go into the missions menu, we can see what we've got outstanding, which at the moment isn't much. 
We've still got the key mission to get to 170 points for promotion, but that's it. Everything else is completed. So really, all that's left is for us to get the remaining 35 points and get ourselves promoted. And that's only three races, so we need to choose wisely here. Ideally, we want to put a time into anything we've not got a time against, because we're still going to get prize money for any event that we've entered, even after we've got promoted. So let's do this event. We've not done any uh, time on this one. So this is Dubai. Let's stick a time in, put something on the board. And remember, I'm only doing each of these events once. That should be enough to set a representative time and get a decent return. So the winnings from this race, that's going to take me back over to 500 SK. But we also know we've got a couple of decent paydays coming up in the next couple of races. Plus, we're now up to 150 points. Oh, Eric is back. What you got to tell us this time? Right, our gloves are wearing out this time. Well, you've only got the option of accepting. You don't have to complete the mission. You're not going to lose anything. But I've got an opportunity here to get some new gloves before I go up to TKM. So let's head to the apparel store and see what's on offer. So we go to gloves, we go to the brand stock, and we can see that the two pairs of gloves available. The Rio stock whites are what we're already wearing, and the Rio stock blues are what we're going to try and open up now. So request a mission. And our challenge is to perform three overtakes at Dubai. Now, this is really quite straightforward. Uh, provided you start towards the back of the grid, if you start from fifth, you only have to finish second. You've got to complete three overtakes. So go from fifth to fourth, from fourth to third, from third to second, and then stay there. You can't go up into fourth and then go back to fifth and then back up to fourth and count that as two overtaking maneuvers. It doesn't work like that. Now, some of these challenges will require you to overtake, say, 15 carts, which means you have to do it over five, six, seven events. But this, three overtakes, we're starting from fifth on the grid, we can do that in a single race. And to be honest, at Dubai, we can do that in a single corner. And there you go, I told you it was easy. Now all you've got to do is complete the two laps and stay in front of those carts. And remember, if you overtake, fall behind and then re-overtake, it doesn't count as an extra overtaking manoeuvre. It only counts once. So, we're up to 165 points now. We're not far away at all. One more race to go. And there's confirmation that you've completed your challenge. Another 20 SK into the coffers, so if we then go over to the apparel store, buy our new gloves, we'll also get some uh, SK from Erica. So these gloves, although they're 125 SK, they're not going to cost us anything like that. And this is Erica again, this time telling us that we've reached 250 kudos, which at the moment doesn't really count for anything. Alien race where they're just dangling a carrot to say, hey, we're going to look at you in the future, but they're not interested at the moment. So there's the 40 SK from Erica for completing the manager mission, and you've already got the 20 SK for completing the challenge. So 60 SK, it's only cost you 65 SK to buy those new gloves. Not bad. So anyway, we're about there. We're only five points away from promotion. So let's choose a race and finish it off. Might as well do a short one, so zip cadet cup at underground. So let's do one final race. We can stick with these tires. They'll last us till the finish. As for the fuel, we've been told here we're low on fuel. Now, really, we could have finished these last three laps with that tank, but it's a free tank of fuel, so let's stock up. And here's Erica with some random challenge that I've apparently completed somehow. I'm not too sure how I've done that, but I'll take 40 SK. Thank you very much, Erica. I'll see you in TKM. So this is it. This should be your last run out in cadets. You'll never have another reason to drive a cadet cart ever again, unless you do a tutorial video like this, of course. So by now we're getting maximum return on the race winnings and this should be the last 15 points to take us over that 170 point threshold up to 180 points. Kudos, we're still not bothering with that. And here we go, this is promotion. You have been promoted. Cadets are no more. This is a summary you get at the end of every season. This is in Cadets, you'll get it in TKM, X30, PRJ. So enter 12 races, won 12 races, uh, five, race meet, five different race meets entered there, and completed two out of seven missions. Uh, this is the mission results. So uh, got promotions, so that's 1,000 SK, and also beat Nico in the Wackersdorf Cup, so that's another 1,000 SK. So we're gonna be collecting 2,000 SK here, nice. 
that's a nice little nest egg to take with you into TKM. Right, prizes time. This is where you're going to start unlocking a lot of things. There's going to be quite a few helmets you're going to unlock here and I would really recommend you don't buy any of them. It's a lot of money and it's going to really eat into your bank account which you really need for other things at the moment. So you've got plenty of time in the game, unlock helmets later on down the line. These things, these are more important. Unlocking tyres. These are the cool super softs. We've actually already unlocked these, so ignore this one. Um, I won't buy any at the moment anyway. 20 uh, aces for a tyre, that is the standard price. So let's ignore that one for now. Uh, more tyres, this will be the warm super softs. And naturally, then there'll be the hot super softs as well. That's a whole other subject you need to be uh, looking into later on. Uh, but... Cool tyres, they work anything up to about 14 degrees. Uh, warm tyres, 14 degrees to about 25, 26 degrees. And then anything over 25, 26 degrees, you want hot tyres. And we've got carts being unlocked now. Sierra DS TKM, that is a wonderful cart, but it's also 20,000 SK, which you do not have at the moment. So ignore that. These are just a beauty pageant of carts that you'll be able to afford in three, four, five weeks time, maybe, if you're uh, successful in TKM. But ignore it for now. Um, now, energy drinks, this is something else, uh, that is to lose one kilogram of weight. If you pay 15 aces, it will drop your weight by a kilogram. Okay, what we've got here, oh okay, this is the SKQ cart. This was uh, unlocked for an event we did um, over a year ago now. And it's actually really quite a nice cart, but it's also 2,000 aces, which you really do not have right now. I wouldn't be spending 2,000 aces on any cart at the moment, not for at least another month or so. Wait until you've got further into the game before you start spending that kind of cash. Oh, and here's the six kilogram uh, SK Fitness drink. Uh, this obviously drops you six kilograms, whereas the other one drops you one kilogram. This is six kilograms for 50 aces. This is better value, but it's a bigger chunk of aces up front. I tend to use this quite often if I've not been racing for a while. Right, now, exhaust. There are two types of exhaust to be interested in at the moment. There are the power finger exhaust and the firebird exhaust. Power fingers are primarily for acceleration. The firebirds are primarily for top end speed. Now it's set for really tight twisty circuits. The Firebird I find is the better exhaust, but you do need to have developed your technique. When you're new in the game, it's very easy to drop your revs down too low and get bogged down coming out of corners. So the power finger really helps you uh, make up that deficit and accelerate hard out of corners. When you're a bit more experienced in the game, the Firebird, that is a great exhaust, but for now I'd recommend the power finger exhaust. And here's Erica again, bearing gifts. She's giving you 65 aces and 390 SK. That's not bad. It's bolted the coffers quite a bit, that is. And now, sit back and enjoy this for a moment. Welcome to TKM. This is where the fight gets real. The carts are much, much faster than cadets and a lot more fun. Everything's much more expensive here and you're gonna to need to bring your strategy A game. Unlike cadets, you're not gonna to want to rush through this league. TKM is much more involved. Spend the next few weeks, the next few months, learning your technique, improving your skills. Ask people questions, they will be happy to help you. Now, although the purpose of this video was just to get you out of cadets and promoted into TKM, I'm going to spend a few minutes just going through your first few hours in TKM. It's a bit of a minefield, so hopefully I can point you in the right direction. So first up, we've got to buy a TKM compatible cart. 
At the moment, I've got four carts available to me, the SK, the Sierra, the Arrow, and the TKM. We can't afford the Sierra or the SK, we can afford the Arrow or the TKM. It's up to you which you go for, but most people tend to stick with the TKM to start with, and it is a good versatile cart. On paper, it's not as fast as the Arrow, but it is a quicker accelerating cart, and in real world, it is a faster cart. Here you get to pick a flag to represent your nationality, and if you're British and you're looking for it, there's only a Union flag. There's no Cross of St George, there's no Saltaire, and there's no Welsh Dragon. Okay, next thing to do is sort your crew out. Go into the crew menu, and here you'll find Super GT and J. Now both of these are currently at level 1. We're going to really want to level these up as soon as we possibly can. And although it seems very silly spending 100 of our 126 aces so early on on something other than the cart, this is critically important, so you may as well spend it now. It'll give you access to additional upgrades and additional ways to fine tune the settings of your cart. Now, Eric has got an introductory aces offer for you. If you ever wanted to buy any aces, this is the time to do it. It's an introductory offer, you're only going to get this once, but it's £1 for 300 aces. And that's usually 4 99 as you can see on the screen there. It will take you several days of watching adverts and entering aces meets to be able to collect 300 aces. So £1, to be honest, that's not actually a bad deal. Okay, let's start looking at some races that we can do. As in cadets, we've got the sponsor invitationals, we've got the championships, but we've also now got the daily ace race meets. Now this is a race meet that gives you opportunity to win aces and open up a tyre offer. And if we have a look at the race details and go into the leaderboard, we can see that if we finish first, we'd get 27 aces. And that's a very good return. Let's have a look at what else we've got available to us. We've still got the multiplayer races. We've also got manufacturer meets. Now these give you the opportunity to open up new carts and new upgrades. In this case, there's a Birrell Art S9 TKM cart available to us at Marienburg. But let's have a look at what's available to us now in the championship races. So if we click on the race menus, we can see that there's quite a few races already available to us. And if we click through each one, we can see what each race has to offer. See how many points and how much SK is on offer to us for each race. And you'll also notice that each race shows a number of shields next to them. A uh, little white shield with red stars. The more shields, the more valuable the race is. So let's start with underground. We did it in cadets, so we're used to it already. So select your TKM cart, and here we get to choose what tyres we use. We've got a choice of maxi yellows or maxi greens. We'll go with the maxi greens because there's a freebie offer on them. They're also a stickier tyre. They're not quite as durable as the yellows, but they are a better all-round tyre. Here we get to choose fuel. Uh, we've got the 95 octane or the 90 octane. 90 octane is free, so we'll go with that one. Super GT's just popped up. He's here to tell us about pressures of your tyres. We didn't really look at that at Cadets, but in TKM and X30, it becomes very important. The green block that you see on the screen there, that changes depending on which tyres you're using. It's a sweet spot of where you need to put the slider bar. It's up to you to fine tune it though, but that's something that will come with experience. The other settings, they're all greyed out at the moment, but they will open in time. As before, we'll skip through the race quickly, we're not interested in that. As in cadets, you get the post-race screens. Unlike cadets where you used to get 15 points for finishing first, you only get 10 points for finishing first. But you do also get 60 SK for winning a race, which was more than the 37 you got in cadets. Now, if we go to the leaderboard for this particular event, you're going to see we're going to be way off the pace. Don't expect to be anywhere near the top of a leaderboard. You're going to be up against much more experienced guys now. They're going to be driving much faster carts with much better upgrades. They're going to have the best apparel to wear and they're going to be as light as they possibly can. Set yourself a realistic goal. It's really going to be a couple of weeks before you're going to be getting anywhere near these kind of times. Okay, now we've got the first race under our belt. I think we should do the Aces Challenge. My best tip to you here is don't spend any aces doing these races. We're trying to maximise our return here, so don't spend any on new tyres or high octane fuel. You don't need to. Just use your worn tyres and whatever fuel's in the tank at the moment. It'll be enough to get you high enough onto the leaderboard to return a decent haul of aces. Okay, with the aces races, you still get the 60 SK for winning the race, but you don't get any championship points. Instead, if it finishes where it is now, we're going to get... 22 aces. Oh, and here comes Erica again. This time we are being asked to upgrade our exhaust and we'll get 40 SK for doing that. So we'll do that in a moment. 
but now our favourite hipster has returned, he's got a tyre offer for us, so that's part of the Aces deal, we've uh, finished the Aces race, we'll get a tyre offer, so we have to watch the video as always, once that's finished we can then claim our tyre reward if we want to. This is only a short video, three seconds. Our reward is a uh, is an offer of uh, hot super soft for 40 aces. Now, at the moment, we don't have 40 aces, so we can't take this offer up anyway. Uh, that's not a bad deal if you did have those kind of uh, aces available, but uh, we'll ignore it for now. Right then, engine apparently needs a service, so uh, if we click on fix engine, we can go and service our engine. Jay's telling us to click the OK, let's do it button, and that will take us through to our garage. So if you click where it says service engine, it'll tell you that it's gonna cost you 127 SK to service your engine. So you can see it's not cheap to run your card. And like many things in the game, you can either wait for the timer to count down or you can use some aces to spool through it quickly. I will always recommend waiting. Save your aces for something far more important. Go and have a cup of tea. And remember, when you get the opportunity, watch the adverts. I know they're a pain in the backside, but they help everyone. You get extra aces and the developer gets extra funds to put back into your game. Ah, payday. Now, this is actually the result of one of the races we did back in Cadets. This is the Wackersdorf Cup, this will be, that was the first one to finish. This shows that even after you've got promoted, you'll still get the winnings from the races that you entered back in the previous series. It also means that there should be three or four other events still to finish, so we've still got some more SK to come. Anyway, let's go and carry out Erika's mission and fit a new exhaust to our cart. So head to your garage, click on the TK and Veloce, and then go to the exhaust and now you've got a choice you can either go with the power finger or the firebird as i've said before the firebird is better for top speed the power finger is better for acceleration when you've got a bit more experience i'd recommend the firebird but for now we'll stick with the power finger now for each exhaust there are four different levels you've got to open them up sequentially so first of all we've got to open up level one and that'll cost us 100 sk and it'll take five minutes again we can use aces to speed up the process but i wouldn't recommend doing that and you also have the option of going straight to level 4 with an aces purchase. It'll cost you 200 aces which you don't have at the moment and I wouldn't even consider doing that until way into the game when you've got a lot more aces to spend. So for now let's just open level 1 power finger exhaust. I'll go and make a cup of tea or something. You don't need to waste 3 aces on saving yourself 5 minutes. But having made your purchase, level 2 exhausts are now available. That's only power finger level 2 though. If you go with firebird you've got to work your way through those as well. One thing I should note, think of these as rental prices. You're not actually buying the item. If you were to swap from the power finger to the firebird, you would actually lose your power finger exhaust. You'd have to buy it all again. It's something that causes quite a lot of argument, but if you were buying it outright, it would cost you a lot more to buy it in the first place. And starting out, that would make your journey a lot more difficult. I can see the logic, but it does make the game very expensive when you're swapping parts around. So anyway, I think we're coming to the end of this tutorial video. We've got ourselves through Cadet and we're well on the way in TKM. As Eric has just said there, enter every race meet once or twice, get yourself on the leaderboard, you don't need to be ranking too high. You just want to be getting a steady turnover of income, getting more in than you're spending on uh, servicing your cart, gradually unlocking new parts, new carts and being able to afford those carts. It's a slow process, it will take a few weeks to really get into the game but once you're there it starts to snowball very quickly. No, oh, and it, as if to prove a point, we've got a race meet finish in here. In fact, we may have a couple finish in here. This often happens when you log into the game for the first time in a day. Uh, a race meet will have finished overnight and suddenly you're four or five hundred SK points better off. And if a few minutes have finished, you could be a couple of thousand SK better off. And in fact, that is the, the first TKM race that we did, the one at Underground. Finished in 30-something place and we still got 400 odd SK. So even finishing quite low down, you'll still get a decent return. And it'll probably only cost you 80, 90 SK to uh, service your cart for doing that race. So if you keep chipping away, enter every single race meter once, twice, maybe three times. Get yourself a decent result. Get yourself a decent return of SK. And over a period of two, three, four weeks, you're going to have built up quite the bank account. And this was the Australian Aces meet that we entered. If you remember, we just used warm tyres and standard fuel. And we've still finished well, 17th and got 19 Aces for that. That's not a bad return. Nothing is easy to gain in this game, but Aces, that's the hardest one to get. SK, they'll kind of come naturally, but Aces, they're really difficult to get. You've really got to be protective of those. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. As cadets done, and first rung of the ladder in TKM. We've got 50 aces in the bank and 2,500 SK. That's not a bad start. We've got a new card and a few upgrades on the way. We're heading in the right direction. 
TKM is a struggle. The whole game is very difficult. No one's going to argue otherwise. But if you do need help, just go on Facebook, ask any of us any questions. We're always happy to help. It's been a long old video this one. Hope you found something useful out of it. If you have, like and subscribe and you'll get notifications of any other videos I put up onto YouTube. But until the next time, see you later.